Yesterday I went on a date and the guy actually rejected me because I'm, according to him, far too spiritual. Woo! Thank God for that. I must be doing something right <laughs> to get us a compliment. Hey crew, welcome to The Spiritual Social. I'm Lexi, your local lightworker. Welcome to episode two in the Unfinished Love Story series. Today, we are going to travel back in time and come up with the answer to the question, which ex is still thinking of you? Keep in mind that having an ex is for a very good reason. So this reading is not necessarily an indication that you should reach out to a person that you have been romantically involved in. This is more like a mental and emotional exercise. We are going to travel a little bit in our heart, in the past. We are going to find out who is still thinking of you. And the reason why they may be thinking of you is because you left a really important emotional healing mark on that individual. As you know, the series Unfinished Love Story deals with past, present and future love energies. We travel in the past, we stay in the present in order to figure out how to manifest love in the future. My whole intention is to help inspire you, to give you some really nice insight so that you can take this energy and make powerful decisions in your own personal life. So, you can listen to this reading on its own. If you're just curious, the question may have sparked some interest in you. You can just watch this pick a card reading and that's it. But I would strongly recommend that you follow along and that you play with the series. At the end of each of your selected choices, I'm going to give you a color. And if you match at least two colors each time when you listen to this pick a card, you unlock the color energy reading that will take place in episode six. I hope this makes sense. It will make more sense as you play along. Let me show you the crystal options that I have here for you. We always have four options. We always have crystals in this specific series. So for you group one, I have here this peach selenite heart. For you group two, I have an obsidian orb. For you group three, I have this gorgeous moonstone with the design of the flower of life. And for you, group four, I have Unakite. It has these red flecks and this green background. So take a moment now to see which of these options pulls you in the most. Try to choose with your gut reaction, with whatever you feel inside of your stomach, not necessarily with your eyes, although the stones are very pretty, I must admit this. My moonstone especially has been through a lot. Um, actually, this is not moonstone, this is selenite. I do apologize for this. I constantly keep mixing them up. There aren't that many big differences between a moonstone and a selenite. In some cases, selenite is the uh, corresponding synonym word to moonstone so that's why I tend to um, kind of uh, mix them up uh, this one ha even has a little bit of wax on it because I spilled some wax during my candle work nights but it's so loved I love to sleep with it selenite can really calm you down as you sleep and can give you really peaceful dreams anyway uh, maybe this was um, a further explanation for those of you who are wondering what is up with this stone um, I just felt the need to clarify a bit more for you guys because we are looking at exes, I felt in a funny way inspired to um, pull some live cards from the Tarot of Curious Creatures by Chris Ann. I love this deck. It's really funny, powerful, and as you guys know, I love animals, so I think this is going to be a really nice addition just to give you a little bit of humor in a situation that can be potentially triggering for some of you out there. I do know that a lot of people are going to comment down below, never again, I don't want to hear about this person, exes are toxic. Keep in mind, boo, that all of us have the potential to be toxic, okay? This is going to be a fun exercise. It's meant to give you some interesting insights, meant to trigger you into meditation potentially. So take whatever you hear in this reading with a pinch of salt. Don't take it too much to the heart. It's not all doom and gloom. Tarot is not destiny. It is just a tool that we use for creative visualization and healing. Okay, 
all this being said as always you know the drill on my channel i pre-shuffle the oracle cards i'm going to live shuffle from the tarot i hope you have made your choice and if you are interested in any other type of information how to get the personal reading have a look at my other two channels i have a channel on astrology and one on peaceful meditations how to get in touch with me through instagram or tiktok i do create short readings there and i'm having loads of fun make sure to check always the links in the description box below they take you to wherever you need to go but for the time being let's be present let's be here and let's dive straight into your pick a card reading Mwah. hey group one welcome to episode two in the unfinished love story series today we're going to find out which ex is still thinking of you who is still obsessing over you from your past so this is a reading for those of you that were drawn to the peach selenite that just fell out of my hand so this is your beautiful crystal stick around until the end of the reading because i will share with you your color and remember that you need to match two colors at least in order to unlock reading number six which is a color energy reading okay so <clears throat> Now, I'm going to live shuffle from the Tarot of Curious Creatures. I have your oracle cards over here. I hope you're having a good day. And if not, I hope this reading will make it a little bit better at least, you know? So let's see. Who is still thinking of you? Which ex? Which of the many people you have dated? Let's see. Oh. A lot of things are kind of coming undone and moving and changing. You could be going through a really emotionally chaotic period in your life. But we're looking at the past, not at the present. So we have here the Three of Pentacles. We have the Three of Swords. Okay. We have the Ten of Swords and one more card. We have the Nine of Wands. Ooh, okay. And your Oracle cards are the Founder and the keywords here are foundations and community we also have here longevity scorpio energy and we also have here the midheaven the pinnacle okay this could be somebody that has some sort of social media reach you may have met this person online this person could be the leader of an online community um, some of you met this person while you were out in some sort of dating event, singles events. You may have met this person while you were speed dating. I see that the community, both offline and online, has a big role in how you guys came together. I also see that this person somehow negatively impacted your um, the way that people perceive you. Um, I feel that because of this person, you garnered a little bit of a bad reputation. Maybe people gossiped because you were together with this individual. This individual may not have been in his highest energy. You could be dealing here with the Scorpio Sun who was low vibrational. I feel that this person really, really pulled a number on you. Uh, they may have actually made you part of a, of a three-party situation. They were potentially married or in a connection with somebody else and you didn't know about this when you found out. Ah, deep betrayal. You know, this person stabbed you in the back. Um, I do feel like this person could have um, a very prominent public role at the moment and some of you, <laughs> some of you, this is a crush, this is like a celebrity crush and you found out that they are married or they have a child with somebody or they're dating somebody seriously and it really made you feel betrayed. It's like, how dare my favorite celebrity have a personal life? <laughs> don't worry, don't worry, boo. I've been there as well, you know. My heart broke when I found out that Henry Cavill, Cavill has a child, you know, yeah. You win some, you lose some, right? Anyway, coming back to the most serious aspect of this reading, I do feel like this is a situation in which you were in a long-term connection with this person. So the ex that is still thinking of you is a person that really touched your heart. Um, a person that you had this very soulful, emotional, uh, rather longish connection, I would say. Um, this person betrayed you or made you feel like you were hurt, backstabbed made you wail, made you cry in pain. This person was somehow foundational to you. You may have wanted to marry this individual or you may have been married to this individual. The Midheaven shows our public role, our personality, our legacy. It is the point that is most luminous in our chart. From the Midheaven, all the light of our astrological chart comes through, right? So 
the planet, the point, the energy that you have there is really showing what kind of light is filtered through. If you have Pluto in the midheaven, it's a very dark light that filters through your birth chart. If you have Leo energy there or the sun, it's like you are incredibly charismatic and well-perceived, well-loved by the public. Um, this person's personal planets, their sun, moon, or ascendant may have touched upon your midheaven. So they influenced how the public perceived you. They may have changed your social role. If you were single, they got you engaged. If you were engaged, you may have gotten married. Um, if you were just by yourself uh, and you didn't get married to this person, you may have had children with them, yeah? So this person changed your status in some way and affected your public persona, the way that other people and the public at large perceives you, the way that people see you as a social role. Are you a wife? Are you a daughter? Are you a son? Are you an uncle? Are you a father? Are you a mother? Those kind of things, yeah? This person may have wanted to live with you in a castle or they may have wanted to buy a castle for you for some reason. Um, in some cases, this was a situation in which uh, this person proposed to you and you didn't get married. So there were some serious obligations here between the two of you, but unfortunately there was also a really huge fight, an argument that led to the separation. If this person is not Scorpio in their energy as an astrological sign, they acted as a low vibrational Scorpio. So they may have been vitriolic, they may have been jealous, secretive, obsessed, um, it's just like all the negative energies like when a when a scorpio is negative it's like really negative like it, scorpios in low vibration can be the darkest sign of the zodiac right so yeah unfortunately you were at the receiving end of this energy this is a person that may have found it difficult to let you go for some of you you met this person through work or it was hard work to get into a connection with them um, it may have been, if not necessarily work, as in going to a 9 to 5. You just collaborated with them and you struck up a friendship. The connection slowly started and then it was very hard to let this person go. This person may have actually thrown tantrums or may have lurked and seethed and like stalked you at the end of the connection. This person may have freaked you out because you couldn't understand why are you hurting me but then why do you find it so difficult to let me go like what's going on here this is a connection that you thought could stand the test of time you really had your hopes up for the situation you thought it had wonderful long-term potential that's why you invested so much energy in it this could have been a back and forth as well which turned toxic unfortunately i do see here that with these two castles here, you see a castle, right? So a castle represents a symbol of status, power, privilege, right? So this person could have brought all of these energies into your life. Maybe they were very wealthy or they came from a really good background. They looked really good on paper, you know? You, you presented maybe this person to your family and friends and they thought, wow, okay, this is it, nice. But unfortunately, the emotional reality of this connection was very harsh. You weren't necessarily happy. This person could have had bouts of anger. Um, in certain cases, you know, this person lashed out or insulted you, may have verbally or physically um, harmed you in some way. Oh, I'm really sorry if this happened, Jesus. Oof. Yeah, well, this is an ex that I would strongly recommend that you keep as an ex. Although you had these hopes that you may get married and have a family and live together, I think that, you know, you need to remember that rejection is God's protection. So be thankful, be grateful. The quicker you find out that a person is not good for you, the better, you know? Even though it's, it, it kind of stings sometimes, you know? But the quicker you find out, the better. It's like your plate is clear, you can move forward seek happiness and your fortune with somebody else a fortress also shows a situation in which you may have felt trapped in spite of this person's kind of like solid protective demeanor you may have felt trapped in some cases this was a really toxic marriage right that started as a work friendship you may have been each other's work wife work husband and then you got married and this person betrayed you and you felt trapped you had to maybe start all over again in this connection or in life in general. Oof. 
We have here the flower is chrysanthemum. This person could have curly hair. In some cases, this is brown or black curly hair because I'm just looking at uh, the ruffles, right, of the chrysanthemum. This person is emotionally messy. I feel that even after you separated, they still couldn't get their life back together. They look like everything is well on paper. I'm just giving you all the cards, look. They, they could portray this image of success and everything is going really well in my life. But sadly, the reality is very different. It's the same thing that they used to do with you um, on paper. On social media, everything looks solid, perfect, like they are an intangible fortress. But in reality, this person has some issues empathizing with their partners as they had um, an issue empathizing with you. They're not happy. I'm not getting a sense that this person is particularly happy. Let's see one more card. Temperance. You were protected by an angel when you separated from this person. Please don't feel guilty. Please don't have remorse or regrets. You have a guardian angel that sheltered you, okay? For some of you, it's very difficult to start all over again, but you were able to do it. So congratulate yourself, pat yourself on the back. This ex that is still thinking of you is a really important game changer in your life. This is a person that you were in a connection with. For most of you, it was a long-term commitment. It was more than six months that you spent together with this person. You had hopes of being together with this person. Unfortunately, they had some deeply seated emotional issues and they were projecting them onto you. It was a case of emotional immaturity. We're dealing here with a person that on paper in their profession, they could have been incredibly good at what they were doing, but in their personal life, they failed to grow up. They were not at all mature. They were just acting out on their impulses. They kept a lot of secrets from you. It was all quite dark. So you escaped the dark. Congratulations, I'm really happy for you. And I think that you're ready to love again. Yeah, I think that you are prepared to spread your wings and fly and soar into a new connection, a much more spiritual, much more emotionally mature relationship with an emotionally intelligent person that is able to relate to you. I feel like your next counterpart will have had a similar difficult experience in their past. So the fact that you had this difficult connection, it was helpful. It was meant to be so that you can empathize with your future lover's past as well. It's like the moment you will meet this new lover and you will hear them talking about their past, you will go like, yeah, me too. Oh my god, that was horrible. Yeah, I can't believe it. Yeah, I've been through the same thing. I completely know what you feel. So that's going to bring you even closer to this person that you will meet next. So be grateful to your ex, even though they may have harmed you. They did it potentially unconsciously. Because if this person is emotionally immature, I doubt that they self-analyze themselves that much. And it was all ultimately leading you towards the path that you needed to walk upon. The Angel of Temperance shows here learning from pain, extracting wisdom from difficult life circumstances. It is about soaring to great new emotional heights. And that's your future, baby. Thank you so much for listening, Group 1. Before you go, I need to share with you the color, especially if you've been playing along with the Unfinished Love Story series. So your color is Moon Grey. I hope that you have chosen this in the previous reading. If not, um, there will be four more episodes that I will release. So I hope you're going to get this color again. You need two matches in order to unlock reading number six. Okay, so thank you so much. Take care of your wonderful heart and I cannot wait to see you in my next episode. Mwah. Ciao. Hi, group two. Welcome to the second episode in the series, Unfinished Love Stories. You can watch this reading by itself if you're just curious in finding out the answer to the topic or you can just play along, which I highly recommend. Stick around until the end of the reading because I will share with you your specific color. You need to match two colors in order to unlock reading number six. So this is a reading for those of you who are drawn to one of my favorite crystal in my collection. This is the Obsidian Orb. Oof, it's a crystal of protection and defense against black magic. So let's see what's going on here with your ex. Your ex could potentially be um, a tarot reader, an astrologer, somebody who dabbles in a cult. Let's see, I have your oracle cards over here. Yes, my nose started itching. 
usually this happens when I am getting in touch with something from beyond the veil. Okay, let's see. So I'm giving right now the Tower of Curious Creatures a good shuffle. Just gonna select the cards because they are not popping out. One of the cards is marked. This person's name could be Mark or their name begins with an M, okay? <laughs> like in James Bond, M. Your mother could have really liked this person. Another insight. So we have here the Five of Swords. Ooh, okay. Somebody who's very argumentative, wants to be right all the time. This person could have mansplayed things to you or they could be a very opinionated woman. We have here the Ace of Cups. Ooh, this person really had feelings for you. They were very excited about being in a connection with you, but they were also incredibly traditional and they wanted to be served. This person may have wanted to be in a connection with you in which you, if you were female, you had to cater to their every domestic and sensual needs while they brought home the bacon, so to say. They uh, really just wanted to spoil you with gifts, lavish you with money, but they demanded complete submission and uh, always kind of like you needing to just uh, put on your high heel shoes and broom the house, uh, stay in the kitchen, you know? You see the difference here, right? This person could also be, in spite of their traditional nature, they could be a very uh, swanky dresser, like they could have a very particular sense of style. They may only dress in designer clothes or in strange colors. Uh, maybe they even have a person like a stylist, somebody that organizes things for them. And we have here the two of wands. Yeah, this person struggled to focus on you. This person was constantly distracted. I'm getting a very strong Gemini, but also Taurus energy. Yeah. A person that really prioritized your physical body. He really wanted you, I'm saying he because I see here a king, um, but this person really wanted you to look good, right? This was the most important element in this situation. And uh, they really favor these kind of like softer forms of femininity, these traditional submissive, you know, the man is the ruler of the household kind of vibe. Um, with the two of wands, I feel like you met this person while traveling. They could come from a different culture than you. This person was very stubborn. And some of you cheated on this person with somebody else. Ooh, the D. I felt like you just wanted to walk out of this connection, but you found it very difficult to explain to this person that you had enough and you don't want to be with them anymore. So you basically started, um, you started going out with somebody else just to make them jealous so that they would walk away. I think that you had a really huge argument with this person. The Five of Swords here is about an argument that really completely obliterates you. Like it leaves you wounded. <laughs> Not necessarily physically, God, I hope not physically, but this person may have said some really difficult, shocking things to you. They may have insulted you, mostly because they were hurt, their ego was badly bruised. Not all of you actually left this person for somebody else. You weren't pushed to the necessity of having to start a new connection so that this person would just leave you alone. Um, you just basically had had enough, you know? Um, you tried to be this traditional um, counterpart to them that they've always wanted, but unfortunately it didn't work out. So you could be dealing here with an earth sign, um, Taurus, Capricorn, uh, Virgo, but a very contradictory individual because I see here that this person could also have some Gemini, Libra and Aquarius placements. Maybe they have like an Aquarius ascendant, a Taurus sun. So they were suffering from an internal conflict. One moment they were progressive and they would allow you space and the next moment they would throw a fit of jealousy or demand to know where you are or keep your phone locked, you know, or yeah, just uh, an individual that was flip-flopping in between personalities sometimes. Not necessarily that they had a disorder, it's just more like they were, they were struggling within and they had a deep they couldn't resolve certain issues inside. They were not uh, reflective enough to sit and think, hang on a minute, why do I have this idea, but actually my behavior is completely contradicting this idea. If, I'm, if I want to be progressive and dress like in this really fun, cool, youthful style, why do I entertain these traditional values? What's going on here? 
So this person was kind of like not really thinking about these issues. They were just acting out in a variety of different ways, which may have left you feeling confused. For some of you, you didn't necessarily want to start this connection. They insisted on being with you. I feel like this Ace of Cups is more like an energy that comes from them. I feel like you really touched this person's heart. I feel like you're very lovable, but you also argued a lot with this individual. You had some pretty, I don't think it was screaming matches. In certain cases, it may have been because I'm reading here for a large collective, but I think you just, um, there was this feeling of angry texting each other, you know, and kind of like low key threatening one another, you know. This person had an issue with you seeking opportunities in other places if you wanted to change your job or travel to another location or go and study someplace else. They would be really stubborn about it and they would feel threatened. I think that in certain cases this is the reason why you guys separated because this person couldn't bear to have a long distance connection with you and they just uh, put an end to this connection. Physicality, closeness, intimacy, the body is really important to this person. So if they felt like they couldn't have any more access to you, they didn't want to stand the chance of you cheating on them with somebody else, which is basically a fear that was inside of themselves, but they were projecting it onto you. I feel like most of the time people that break up with you because they cannot be away from you because they are afraid that you will cheat on them, are people that know that they have the potential to cheat on you. So they break up with you quickly before they can actually cheat on you and turn into the bad guy. They're protecting their ego in this way. I hope that makes sense, yeah? So it's like, I'm not gonna allow you to leave me. I'm gonna leave before you leave me so that I have the upper hand. This Five of Swords is about some mean, rude verbal exchanges, yeah? And this person may have also shamed you like, um, physically in some ways. They may have said something like you need to do some sort of surgery in order to improve your beauty or they could have said something like um, you know why are you dressing like this you look like an SLUT you know. Um, in, in situations when you just wanted to look better you were feeling yourself you wanted to look a little bit hot and this person just may have shamed you, which shame on them if they did that to you, you know, shame on them. If they can express themselves by wearing a red suit with blue socks, <laughs> why should you not put on a tank top and a really beautiful retro vintage 50s dress with high heel red shoes, right? Why not? Hmm? What is this double standard? <laughs> okay, more clues to help you understand who is this ex the fourth house home somebody that comes from your own culture so this you may have met this person traveling but this is somebody from your own culture uh, the archer sagittarius energy somebody that can be quite exuberant optimistic but also moralizing and judgmental a person that could have laughed at your sensitivity um, and trampled over your emotions. A person that you met someplace around the home, maybe your mother figure introduced you to this person. For some case, for some of you out there, this was um, an arranged marriage option. Your parents picked this person for you and you got along relatively well, but then it all kind of came crashing down as you got to know this person deeper and deeper that they were just being like a, an anger bear, quite domineering. Um, we see here the keywords biding your time and planning ahead. I feel that in some cases this person put you off because they had like a five-year plan, <laughs> like a very communist agenda. Um, they may have wanted to, you know, like we get married this year, next year we have a child, then after two years we have another child, then we move into our home. Um, and you felt a little bit scared, trapped, or you had a plan together in certain cases and this person just completely bailed out on it or was not really reacting in any way, they felt lethargic. There is something here about some plans that you initially established going awry. And then we have here hope, the daffodil Taurus energy, yeah. So we get a clarification. We see here that this king of coins is Taurus, much like I felt it earlier. I did mention Taurus energy. 
go back and re-listen to the reading if you don't believe me but yeah I feel like um, my intuition today is quite on fire so you're benefiting from it um, <laughs> that sounded very cocky this person could have actually been quite cocky yeah quite arrogant um, or self-assured to the point of stupidity like I know that I can do everything but can they really you know are they really good at everything all of us need to learn certain things you know it's good to be humble from time to time the daffodil here um, you know the Latin name of the daffodil is narcissus pseudo narcissus <laughs> so narcissistic behavior narcissistic tendencies yeah I need to look good you need to look good by my side I'm going to impress your friends and family while keeping you emotionally impoverished in this connection. Hungry for more, never giving you as much as you want, as much as you need. You, On some level, you're still pining for this person to come back. And I mean, you do you, boo, but I highly recommend that you pay close attention to your intuition, your feelings. You know deep down in your heart this person is not good for you, okay? But something happened and this person's, you know, Cupid's arrow struck your heart. This person's energy really affected you. And you got dragged into this kind of like battle of wills and willpower. This person may have also made you carefully explore other relationships after you separated from them. It's like you can't really give yourself fully because of the damage that you incurred as you were in connection to this person so again keep in mind an ex is an ex for a very good reason you had solid reasons to separate from this person and if this was a case in which this person left you keep in mind that you're not somebody to be left and abandoned if somebody does this to you clearly they have missed an opportunity with you so you need to hold them accountable Okay, thank you so much for listening. This is the reading that I had for you. Good luck with whatever you decide to do next. I do feel like you are better off just focusing on your future and I wanna give you your color right now. So your color is Burnt Sienna. Okay, so if you've been playing along with the Unfinished Love Story series, this is the color that you need to match at least twice to unlock pick a card reading number six which is the final color energy reading from the series if you played along or if you haven't thank you so much for listening and i cannot wait to see you in my next one take care hey Ciao. group three welcome to episode two in the unfinished love story series so this is going to be a reading in which we'll find out which ex is still obsessing over you who is thinking of you from your past we're taking a step in the past so that we could focus more on healing in the present now this is a reading whoa, 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 i couldn't speak <laughs> for a second this is a reading for those of you who are drawn to this selenite which has this beautiful flower of life pattern onto it you see how beautifully it emits this soft energy stick around until the end of the reading because i will give you your color especially if you're playing along with the series you can also just watch this video by itself if you're just interested in finding out which ex is still thinking of you as you know i'm going to live shuffle from the tower of Cru curious creatures i cannot speak this person's name could be could begin with the letter C. It could be Christian, Christina, Cara, Chloe, Car Carnart. I don't know, Carnart. Uh, okay. So people whose name begins with the letter K and C. Okay. So just uh, the first clue related to my mistake my incapacity to pronounce certain words yeah it just so happens spirit gives me messages left and right i have your oracle cards over here i'm going to show them to you in a second but first let's see what tarot cards you were given i'm just going to pull them out of the deck for some reason i feel like you need five cards okay are you ready so the moon you could be dealing here with a person that has a moon in Pisces, moon in Cancer, or is a Cancer sun, a Pisces sun. Uh, a person who uh, you may have thought they're crazy, yeah? A lunatic. Yeah, if you think about the Latin name of the moon, Luna, yeah, a lunatic. I also see here the Queen of Cups, definitely a water sign. A water sign heavily thinks of you. Uh, may even want to get back to you. Water signs tend to have these back and forth relationships, you know, they 
um, they begin a relationship enthusiastically then they run out of feelings or energy they leave that person they connect with somebody else and they find out that the grass is not greener on the other side so they return to the person like yeah, Scorpios, Pisces, and Cancerians can be very emotionally messy and they could just travel back and forth, you know, in these relationships. If you don't believe me, look at um, Elizabeth Taylor and Robert Burton um, because they are just basically, yeah, Pisces son, Scorpio son, and they got married twice. Anyway, coming back, uh, Richard Burton, sorry, not Robert Burton. A lot of mistakes. You feel like you made a lot of mistakes in this relationship with this person or you feel like this person wronged you, made a lot of mistakes in this connection and you feel like you can't forgive them. This person sees you as their ideal wife, partner, uh, the future mother to their children. I am saying wife and woman because I see here the queen. This person could have uh, problems articulating words. This may be somebody that doesn't speak the same language as you. Uh, English could be their second language or it could be somebody that just finds it difficult to speak Especially if they are a water sign. They may want to express themselves through songs or images Or by touching you. It's very hard for this person to generally reflect out loud or Generally sit and think deeply about what they want to tell you The eight of cups. This was a really painful breakup you didn't want to separate from this person, but you had to. Circumstances just aligned themselves in such a way that you just had to let go and let God. It was very difficult. You cried a lot. This person cried a lot. You both were hurting. This person is pining after you. They're yearning deeply, deeply. Um, for some cases, this may have been, just for a few of you, a situation where this person abandoned you in your wedding day, during your wedding day, or left you at the altar, and you find it very hard to forgive them, obviously. Now we have the Six of Swords and the Snake, Healing, the Rabbit. This is a person that you had very good physical compatibility, if you know what I mean. Behind closed doors, if you guys got intimate, it was fire it was so compatible so organic so natural so everything fits you know together you were just like very good at love making uh but and i feel like being together with this person sleeping next to them smelling them you know being sensually attached to them uh waking up next to them making love to them was calming you it was deeply uh, peaceful and it was nourishing to your heart like you felt really good you know you went through a glow up when you were in this connection before it all came dramatically crashing down and then i see a knight of pentacles i feel that this is a different energy so in some cases you may have left this person for another individual or they left you in order to explore a relationship with another person um, in some cases this person left you because they um, they told you that they were gay and that they wanted to explore a relationship with the same gendered individual yeah so that came as a shock and that's why you didn't want to leave them but you had to because what can you do I, I can't be if you are a woman I can't be a man if you are a man I can't be a woman you know like I cannot satisfy you in this way so uh, you had to sadly leave them this person came out of the closet they may be bi still but it was a shock this is also for a very small group of you out there um, overall I do feel like this person tried to be with somebody else an earth sign intervene in your relationship it doesn't matter this so much whether you were the one who cheated or if they were the one who cheated or you both kind of decided to seek your fortune with somebody else. It was a really unfortunate situation because you both were bringing to each other a lot of peace but you had to separate, you had to suffer this loss, the Eight of Cups. This is the energy of I don't want to leave, but I have to. You're leaving me no choice. You know, I cannot take this pain anymore. I suffer too much. I just want to be happy, right? It's the card that comes previously from the Nine of Cups. So 
The Nine of Cups is about seeking happiness on your own and finding fulfillment just by yourself as a single individual. So a lot of you actually did. You're thriving at the moment. Yeah, you are in some way emotionally blossoming and this person really, really wants to get back with you. I don't feel like this individual is as difficult or toxic to go back to as the previous two readings for group one and two. I would highly recommend no longer going back to this person. With this person, your individual, let's see what the oracle cards are saying. I'm not seeing here a lot of toxicity. This is more about emotional messiness, not really knowing what they want, changing their minds and frustrating you because of that. But I do see that the connection and the breakup, like connection towards the end and the breakup was painful. So yeah, you may want to keep that in mind if you're considering going back to this individual. Let's see. Your Oracle cards are, oh, okay. The Acolyte, new project and learning. This looks like a UFO, like a creature from the deep. <laughs> in some cases, this person, you met them in Turkey or they come from Turkey. I don't know why, but this looks like the, the top of Hagia Sophia, which is one of the, oh God, the word Denkmal uh, comes to mind in German, which is kind of like a symbol for, um, if I'm not mistaken, is it Istanbul or Ankara? I haven't been to Turkey, guys. I know, shame on me. I should travel there one day. But uh, just as a side note, for some of you out there, Turkey, Turkish culture. Some of you actually um, broke up with this person on Thanksgiving Day. There is something here that you haven't heard of. I see this as a, a letter that is wrapped, a letter that was unopened, a letter that did not reach you, but it could also be a towel, like throwing in the towel, like giving up. You don't know certain information that this person wanted to convey to you. Maybe they sent you a letter and you forgot to open it or it got lost in the mail or a friend, a parent forgot to give it to you. Huh, interesting. We also have your positivity or they may have sent you a message but you couldn't, it didn't reach you. You changed your phone or something happened. You need to clean up your inbox. There's something in your spam folder. That's what I'm hearing for some select few of you. <laughs> this person may have tried to reach you during the previous Mercury retrograde, which ended about a week ago. So we have your positivity, Marigold, Leo, and we also have your Mars motion. You are the pile that I have high hopes that you guys are going to reconnect. You are generally the kind of person that struggles at the moment to connect with people in the present because you are still hoping that something may happen between you and this water sign that you hold so dear. You didn't want to separate from them, you had to, and you keep wishing that the situation will change for the better. So Leo energy, positivity, opening up your heart. You guys could reconnect during Leo season or you already have reconnected because I'm filming this in Virgo season in 2024. Depending on when you stumble upon this reading, this may apply to you. You may reconnect in Leo season from the moment when you watch this reading. But yeah, there's still a lot of passion. This person made you happy. When times were good between the two of you, they were really good. And physically, you guys were incredibly compatible and that's hard to find. A person that's physically compatible with you and just hits the right spots, if you know what I mean. Yeah, that's, that's special and that's something most people hang on to, you know, when they find it. And clearly I see here that with Mars there will be some forward movement. This person doesn't want to let you go. I see here Aries energy, Leo and water sign energy. So this individual is very impulsive. They may act first and think later. And this is why maybe they broke your heart and you had to leave them, but they haven't stopped thinking of you. If they left you for somebody else, they really regret doing this. Um, I also hear that if they thought that they were gay, uh, it was just something that came over them. They were in a very experimental phase, but they're not actually gay. Okay. That's bizarre. 
and I feel like this person also um, focused on their work on making more money in the meantime because they want to kind of build a home with you or settle into a home with you and they want to be able to give you what you deserve to protect you yeah this person is still deeply in love with you in spite of the fact that their erratic impulsive behavior may have harmed you in the past they they still hold a candle for you they still think that you are the one that can make them happy that they haven't experienced happiness with somebody else since you guys separated so this is what I see for you, group three. God bless whatever you decide to do. Keep in mind that next is an ex for a very good reason. So you may just consume this relationship in your mind and make the decision to move forward or some of you are actually going to return to this person as they will swoop in to try to romance you again. I think that they're coming hot and fast, potentially around Aries or Scorpio season because we had the Mars card there. Thank you so much for listening. Don't go away. I still need to give you your color. And your color for this specific pile is metallic copper. Okay, so this is the color. Make sure that you match it with at least one more um, in order to unlock reading number six, the final installment in the series, so that I can do your energy color reading. Okay, thank you so much for playing along. Thank you for being here. Take care with whatever you decide to do, and I cannot wait to see you in my next one. Hey, group four. Welcome to episode two in the Unfinished Love Story series. So this is a reading in which we're gonna dive a little bit in the past so we can heal whatever remains in the present in order to help you manifest for the future. I hope this will make sense. It will make more sense as I release the episodes and you play along. If you do, you can also watch this reading by itself if you're just curious to find out which ex is still thinking of you, who is still obsessing over you. Okay, so this is a reading for those of you who are drawn to Yunakite, you see how gorgeous speckled this stone is. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I feel like you're dealing here with a one-of-a-kind individual, somebody who's quite non-conformist. Their name could begin with the letter N, L, or T, in some cases a Z as well. I have your oracle cards over here. I'm going to live shuffle from the Tower of Curious, Cre Tower of Curious Creatures. Okay. A person whose name begins with the letter R as well. Wow, you got the most letters before. Maybe you've got the most sexes as well. Mm, who knows? <laughs> okay, so let's see. Stick around until the end of the reading because if you're playing along, I need to give you your color. So let's see. Who is still thinking about my beautiful group four? Okay, perfect. So the first card that we have here, the star, potentially an Aquarius, an Aquarius sun, or a person that has Uranus conjunct their ascendant, a person with Venus conjunct Uranus, a person with Venus in Aquarius. I also see here a seven of wands. This person could be, <laughs> whoa, okay. <laughs> um, they could be a little bit rough around the edges, impulsive, they may have brought some chaos energy in your relationship. You couldn't be with them because they weren't stable enough. You really couldn't see how you could have a life together with this person since they were moving around very quickly, making a lot of shifts in their life. They may have been quite stressed during the time when they were seeing you. You also thought that this person was seeing other people. You somehow had to um, persevere in this relationship with them this person really um, struggled to accept your love like you kept going at them and being with them and trying to help them understand that you love them and they they had this defense they had this resistance this person could have a star-like personality they could be locally known if not celebrities in their own rights some of you are crushing on a celebrity that is an Aquarius sun I see here with the Knight of Swords, definitely air sign energy. Somebody who's quite argumentative, very fast, can be quite critical, analytical. This is a person who's not at all spiritual. This is an individual that believes in the power of the mind to solve every problem. Some of you made fun of this person and called them your little Sherlock Holmes. 
this person could be into playing computer games, they could be into sci-fi, they're very progressive, they may have suggested an open relationship to you or even the possibility of doing a threesome together with them and a friend of theirs. I don't think that you took it so well. Some of you actually jumped into it but you didn't necessarily enjoy it or you thought it was like, mm, Mac, it's an experience. I see that this person was very friendly. With this rainbow here, I see that you could be part of the LGBTQ community together with this person. So this is a specific message for those of you who identify. I do feel that this person initially made you very happy. You thought that this person is your home. You thought that you could generally just ride this wave of happiness with them. You liked the fact that they were free thinking, that they were open, tolerant. They were liberated in some way. Literally, when you met this person, you felt like you could breathe better, like there was fresh air coming into your love life. This person may, ha may have taught you a thing or two in the bedroom. You may have had no experience before them, and then after them, it felt like, whoa, okay, I think I leveled up in terms of my sensually pleasing skills. I feel like you're still on good terms with this person or you were initially friends that turned into friends with benefits and then it turned into some sort of... I don't think that you had a sour ending. It's just, it's a resistance. It's like this person is very stubborn. They may come into your life and walk out of it. They resist love. They don't allow you to, to love them completely. They're very hard on the inside. Very hard to reach sometimes emotionally like mentally they could be brilliant but emotionally they could be like a block of ice you know oftentimes you wonder does this person have any feelings hey luna and luna came sniffing around your color i'm going to show you the color in a second there you go my baby Luna has been very affectionate lately. So it's interesting because I think that lately you've been very affectionate in your life, okay? You may have been receiving a lot of warmth, a lot of joy and satisfaction from your connection with other people. And you're noticing just how emotionally starved and hungry you were in this connection with this person. Baby, what are you doing? You may have said that to your ex. It's like, what are you doing, baby? You know, like what's going on? Why are you behaving in this way, yeah? So, <laughs> exactly, this person came in, stretched, walked out, right? So, um, I feel that this is the most um, open-ended pile of them all. There's a lot of air, things are not yet set into stone, this could be a situationship in certain cases. Some of you are crushing on a celebrity <laughs> and you know that it's not going to happen but you're here just because you like to hang out with me. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. You're always welcome. Others of you um, are keeping things open-ended because you could be part of a community so maybe you guys are dating amongst each other in that specific group of yours. You know that it's hard to find a specific partner so you're both kind of keeping the situation open until somebody decides to say, this is a commitment, let's get married or let's be together for a longer period of time. But I definitely see here an individual that is very airheaded. They could be very poetic and romantic in the way in which they talk to you. You could have a lot of fun, a lot of laughs with this person, but there is some sort of emotional block. I'm getting that this person is very, closed off emotionally and you keep flipping in between are we friends are we lovers what's going on here i feel like you my viewer you want something more emotional more passionate more nourishing well this person is okay just with having a, a physical mental relationship with you they like to talk to you they may like to hit the sack with you you know and that's about it yeah, I can understand your frustration and I can understand why this person is an ex, yeah? Now, let's see. We have here the Imun Koeli, the root. Since you met this person, you've been undergoing a deep emotional transformation. I feel like this person was by your side when things were changing in relation to your father, to your home, 
do everything that you thought that you could rely upon. You may have also relocated and moved into an environment where you met this person. So this person could be your roommate or flatmate or somebody that you met while studying, while relocating to another place, to another home. Oh, a halfway home. That's what I'm hearing for some of you. I have here Gemini purification and this is the Snapdragon. So yeah, very clearly I can see here that there's a certain duality. Like this person says one thing today and the next day they say something different. They could say that I love you, I want to be with you and the next morning they act like they don't even know you. You had to let go of this person. You had to purify your energy untenable I cannot keep doing this that's what I keep hearing whoa and I see here the assassin wow what a powerful energy this is Pluto I see here ruthlessness and conviction this person may have really taken you down taken you down verbally right like argued with you argued against you I feel like you had a good sense of self-esteem and then you met this person and it just collapsed. You had to piece yourself back together after this connection ended. This person may, may want to have this, some sort of control over you, yeah, to the point where it disturbed your thinking. Some of you may have doubted your mental health after you came out of this connection. It was so intense. Um, this person may have played mind games with you. You know, kind of like giving you some love, then pulling away, seeing what you're going to do, trying to get you to become obsessed with them, trying to spin you on their little finger. Um, and in certain cases, you were strong and you could, you could pick up on the fact that they were BSing you. And in other cases, you just gave in and yeah, it was, it was a transformative process. Yeah, this person really changed you. Change the way that you see personal connections. In certain cases, this was a connection with a person of the same gender as you. You decided, yeah, sure, I know this person. This person is familiar to me. Let's try something out. And it ended up becoming much deeper, much more intense and more manipulative than you thought that it would ever become. I do think that you guys were trauma bonding as well. Something happened in your life and in this person's life that really destabilized you. And it's kind of like you found a home with each other, to be honest. It's like you, you somehow managed to give each other a sense of safety and familiarity during tumultuous times. You may have actually um, quarantined with this person and it was a deeply um, healing time for both of you but then once the quarantine lifted it's like you didn't know what to do how to go out into the world there were issues this person accused you of lying of being fake they tried to take you down in certain cases they tried to cancel you online they really wanted to affect your reputation and you did struggle with mental health this person really really um, it took you off balance they took you off your center you may have needed to be medicated for a while after the separation happened. So definitely don't go back to this person. I mean, you do you boo, right? But purification, let this go, let this go. I'm here to let you know, to give you a, a firm answer related to certain doubts that you may have. Some of you are wondering, have I made the right decision to separate from this person? Oh yes, 200% yes, okay? definitive yes yes with capital letters I would highly recommend that you don't go back to this person okay for your own safety for your own mental health balance and protection this is an individual that can be quite cold and cruel calculated so be mindful keep this card in mind the assassin yeah? be careful yeah I do not want to see on the five o'clock news yeah so take care of yourself boo you are going to find a home and root yourself into your own inner temple. You're going to understand that you don't need to search for a home outside of yourself, that you can be your own shelter in a stormy time. 
and that's only gonna make you stronger and it will make you fit for a healthy new connection. So get ready to experience real love as you let go of the past, of needing to chase another person or kind of like to constantly wanting to give to this person and this person just pushed you away. But they also made you happy at key moments so that they could string you along. No, that's not the right way to treat you. Most likely an Aquarius or Uranus Aquarius energy, a person that is just can be quite charming, but it's also quite calculated. So be careful because they're going right now through a dark night of the soul. Pluto is in Aquarius and in the next 20 years, this person's life is going to change in a dramatic way. So try not to hit your wagon to their star, but um, just make friends with the star within. You are as equally important and as valuable as you thought that this person was once in your life. Thank you for listening, group four. I think that your reading was the deepest of all of four of them. Um, thank you for being here. I hope that you'll make a wise decision that prioritizes self-love and self-care rather than sacrifice. And now I'm going to show you your color. So the one that Luna sniffed earlier when she was interrupting your reading, we have here raw umber. So this is your color. I hope that you have selected this in the previous reading. If not, I have four more episodes coming along. Make sure to match it at least twice so I can use it in the sixth episode and do a color energy reading for you. Thank you. Until next time, take great care of your beautiful self, your beautiful heart. Mwah. Ciao!